Mewing is for more than just looks maxing. In fact, it may improve your breathing, your brain, and your entire body. So for those of you who don't know what mewing is, it's a facial exercise that a lot of people have been using most recently in YouTube videos and such in order to improve their jawline. If you take the tongue and you put it to the roof of your mouth and you suck out all the air, sort of like this, it'll improve your jawline aesthetics, among other things. The question for today's Yo Elliot video is actually, Yo Elliot, how do I increase the capacity of my nasal passage? So for those of you who don't know, your nasal passage is like sort of a cavity right above your palate. Our friend wants to know how do I increase that and for obvious reasons, because if you have a wider nasal passage, you will breathe more freely, more flow. And so you're looking for more flow, oxygen flow. And so it's a good thing. Now, when you ask this question, I immediately thought of the images, the pictures that I saw in a book that I read in 2002 called Nutrition and Physical Degeneration. So I learned about Weston A. Price from Paul Check way back in like 2002. And one of the things that Weston A. Price, who was a dentist in the early 1900s discovered was that people at that time were being born with narrower palates. It was just like an anomaly to him. He couldn't figure it out because he was a dentist all throughout the 1800s, early 1900s, there was a shift and he's like, what's going on with people? Why is there narrow palates and crowding of teeth? Because when the, when the, when the palate narrows, the teeth don't have as much room to grow. So it was like a new thing. He was like, why are people having crooked teeth? And we take it for granted today and we say, oh, genetics. Oh, everybody needs braces because everybody's got genetics. Well, you know, genetic problems, right? Those genetic problems didn't exist prior to the early 1900s. And this is what that doctor slash scientist understood at that particular time. And he went about trying to figure out what the heck is going on. Why are people having these narrow palates? Now, before I go into what he discovered with regard to why these narrow palates and crowding teeth are proliferating at that time and what you could do in order to fix it, um, I think it's really important that we talk about the effects of having a narrow palate, right? So first of all, it's very clear your teeth will be more crowded. If you wore braces, you have a narrow palate because God didn't make us so that there was no room for all your teeth. He created human beings to have all their teeth. Right? Like I do here. I never wore braces. Right? This is what a normal mouth looks like. You see that? Normal mouth fits all of the teeth. So not only does a narrow palate, which was an anomaly at the time, cause crowding of teeth, he noticed a slew of other things, including mental retardation. He noticed that people were dumber when they had narrow palates. And this is completely objective. This guy was a scientist. You can go and read the book. There's a lot of, you know, there's a whole Weston A. Price Foundation that you could study his work. He discovered that people were, with narrow palates were dumber. We weren't as intelligent. We weren't as, as um, intuitive. And we were more aggressive. He noticed that this, the, the people with these narrow palates behave differently. So had mental and behavioral dis distortions, right? Just think about everybody today. And a part of the reason why he, he, su he suggested that that was the case was because when you have a narrow palate, it pushes up on the brain. So where a palate should be flat, right? And the brain should sit right on top of it because your brain's right here. I mean, your nasal passage and your brain, they work together in a lot of ways, right? So in other words, like proximity. So if the palate is flat, then the brain fits nice. And the things that are on the undersurface of the brain, right? I don't know exactly what's under there, but he, he did mention um, certain glands. I think it was the uh, pineal gland, I believe, sits right at the bottom, like right in the middle. And when the, the, par the palate was narrowed, right? You could just imagine, so the palate is still the same width, but it bends up like this. He knows that the palates were doing this. It would push up on the gland, push up on the regions of the brain that would affect behavior and intelligence and a whole slew of other things. So just consider for a moment, this was like 1912, something around there, like right before the world wars. And he was wondering, why do people have crooked teeth and act like retards? 
We all have crooked teeth and we're all retarded today. Just something to consider. I know you're asking about nasal passages. So what he discovered through his research, and his research was like he traveled the world because he wanted to see what indigenous people or people who didn't have dental issues, crowded teeth and narrow palates, how they lived and what they did and what they ate. Because at that time, there were still what he, what he said were people who were untouched by uh, commerce foods. This is what he was looking for, people who ate their natural diets. So he studied the Maasai in Africa. He studied some uh, people in the Swiss, uh, Swiss mountains. He, he, he studied uh, Eskimos and just uh, several different people, South America's. North America, Indians, so on and so forth. So like these, there were these people that were still around at that time that didn't eat the shit that we eat. And so you can probably ascertain based on what I'm saying, his discovery was that the narrowing of the palates and the crowding of the teeth and the retardation and the, and the, and the, and the small nasal passages are a byproduct of the food that we eat. And so there's a whole, it, there's a whole foundation that's built on restoring our natural diet so that we can have healthier babies, Weston A. Price Foundation. Babies born to parents that ate their natural diets, which is the diet high in, in, in animal fats, this is just what he discovered, animal fats, raw dairy, very minimal grains, no processed foods, not much sugar or fruit at all. It was like organs, meat, raw dairy. Parents, who he put on that diet, their children would come out with bigger heads, wider heads. In fact, he, he talks about how when he would go and visit some of these indigenous people, he's talking about people in S South America in particular, who would go out of their way in order to get to the sea so that they can buy, the, so they can get seafood that's high in these omega-3 fatty acids and, and the vitamin K and some of the things that he discovered was necessary for the diet for the development of a full brain. When he interviewed those people, the mothers and the grandmothers would say, oh, we have to go get these foods for the mom to eat while she's pregnant so the baby have a stronger head. That's what they said. You know, they weren't using scientific language. They said, baby has stronger head, stronger head, bigger head, more powerful head. When, they, when their mommy eats the right foods. Also, just sort of an aside, breastfeeding helps support that widening of the palate as well. Because when you give a baby a, a nipple, the baby's mouth and face becomes lazy. The muscles don't have to work because it just goes, it's, it's, it sucks the stuff. But when it has to latch onto a breast, it has to do that. So that strengthens a lot of the muscles in the jaw. It can create a, uh, a widening of the skull. It does a whole lot of stuff too. So if you want to avoid narrow nasal passages like you're struggling with right now, you want to save the next generation, Start eating whole food diets based on Weston A. Price's suggestion and breastfeed your baby, right? Don't marry a woman who's going to bottle feed. Talk about that ahead of time. That's how you vet a wife. Hey, you're going to use those tits to feed my kids, right? 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 And if she's got silicone in there, <laughs> you might want to think twice. So th that doesn't necessarily answer your question, but it tells you why we have these narrow palates and we're, our heads aren't as wide as we sh uh, they should be so that we could have nice free nasal passage flow. One thing that I noticed about people who have wide palates, I'm thinking about my, my dad in particular and, my, and, and my, my daughter, and I'm going to tell you about that in a moment too, and myself, right? I was born with a wide palate. They talk louder, they breathe more actively, like when you're standing next to my dad, you hear him breathe. It's like every time he breathes, it's a freaking hurricane. Now, I mentioned my daughter. So by the way, all of my kids needed braces because I grew up on a Western diet, not a Western A price diet, a Western diet. I grew up, my mom didn't breastfeed me, but I, because I was the first of all of my children, all of my siblings, I had all the nutrition from my mother growing up in Belize that gave me the widest palate. My brother beneath me, he's got a small, little bit of a smaller palate, not as bad as mine. And then my third brother and my sister, their teeth were all fucked up. It's not genetics, it's that the soil from which we were born, my mother's body, had less and less nutrition and more and more toxins 
over the years of her of giving birth to her, her, her children, right? I was the lucky one, first one out, fresh soil, bang, right? Plus she was younger, so you know, a lot less toxins. So my kids all have braces because my wife grew up on hot dogs and soda, and so did her mom and probably the mom before that. They were, you know, they were all American people. My parents were from Belize, so they ate like they ate a lot of natural foods. They didn't have American foods. My three through all four of my children needed braces or or had crooked teeth, but one of my daughters, we were introduced to a technology at the time that allowed her not to need braces, but in fact create more room in her mouth for the teeth to grow in normally. They gave her a palate expander. They gave my, my daughter a palate expander so that her teeth could fit in better. Now think about that. Rather than, so I have two daughters in particular, one who's got a really narrow head and one's got a bigger head. The one with the narrow head, they just put braces on. They took out a couple of teeth and put braces and just straightened it out. My other daughter with a big, her head's big like mine, right? But she needed braces because she had a narrow palate. They opened her palate and she's got a bigger head, right? So I recognize the power of palate expanding, not just for uh, teeth, but also for aesthetics dealing with my daughter. And she's got a totally different sort of attitude as well with that big old mouth she got. So what do you do? How, how does this help you? For, first of all, in order to increase your nasal passage, you can work to open your palate. And one of the ways that you can open your palate is with mewing, mewing. Because when you stick your tongue up at the roof of your mouth and you suck out all that air and saliva, your tongue is a powerful muscle. It, I think it may be one of your strongest muscles in the body. It may be the most strongest muscle in the body, the tongue. When you, when you press it up that way, it does a number of miraculous things. Number one of which I imagine, this is not, scientific. But I imagine over time, just like with the palate expander, if you do it enough, your palate will expand and your nasal passage will open. Right. And I know it happens in an acute way because when I ruck with my son, we put on 40 pound packs and we walk around the lake, you know, we do like three miles. When I ruck with my son and I tell him because, you know, we get tired when you ruck, you put up a pack and you're like this after a while, like it was just you're exhausted. And so every once in a while, I remind him, I say, Shoulders back, tongue on the roof of the mouth. Tongue on the roof of the mouth. Tongue on the roof of the mouth. Very powerful stuff. I learned that from Paul Check many, many years ago. But I tell him mew now, because that's what people do. Mew. I say, shoulders back, mew. And while we're doing that, while I'm doing that, I'm breathing not just more or more fully, but in a more relaxed way. My breathing is much more relaxed. Because it's, I think it has a, it even, I feel, even feel it in my chest, like it opens something up, you know, the whole body's connected. So mewing, that's why I opened this whole video about mewing. You want to incre improve your nasal passage, try mewing. Now, the other thing that I discovered, or, or another thing I discovered that I think actually works better than mewing, is bioenergetics. And when I teach bioenergetics, based on the way I learned it from Alexander Lowen passed down to... Dr. Glazier, all bioenergetic exercises were done with an expanded palate because we breathe like this. Bioenergetic breathing, I'm not telling you to walk around mouth breathing, but bioenergetic breathing, when you're doing the exercises, a part of the reason why we do it with a wide open mouth is because it expands the palate. It opens the throat. So it opens the throat and look, like you might be sitting here right now and there are muscles that are constricting your nasal passage. There are muscles up in here, like right here. If those muscles are tight, it will constrict your nasal passage, right? That's why people who, people who are mouth breathers, they often look like this, right? Right? Look terrible because these muscles are overacting. And they're, and so when you, but when you do this, you stretch those muscles. You stretch a whole slew of shit in your head when you breathe with an open mouth for bioenergetic breathing. And I've personally, this is the only thing here that I've personally experienced. Everything else I'm talking about is anecdote and just, you know, analogies and shit. The only time I've ever experienced a widening of my throat and palate is when I was consistently doing open mouth breathing. I breathe better through my nose when my mouth is open because it, because it, it, 
expands or it like relaxes a lot of the muscles back here. And the muscles back here aren't separate from what's going on in the nasal passage. They work together. It's one freaking passage. So I feel the, like the back of your throat, the back of your throat is a part of your nasal passage in a way. The muscles, they, 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 they work together. So wide open mouth, almost like you're yawning. <sighs> Even doing a yawn will help you open that up. It'll deepen your voice. It'll do all kinds of great stuff. So that's it. That's all. That's my answer to that, y'all. If you want to improve your nasal capacity or, or capacity, you want to uh, increase your nasal passage passageway, you can do so by mewing, but more importantly, with bioenergetic breathing, and even more importantly, save the next generation by getting rid of the junk food and eating a natural diet. Your kids may be saved from needing braces, done.